Hey guys, welcome back to True Local TV. I am your host, Steph, and I am here again with Dr. Jason Fung talking all about intermittent fasting and weight loss. So the next place I want to go with you is to kind of tackle this conversation where I think some people might get confused is the difference between intermittent fasting and just strict calorie restriction. We, we've talked about calories, but how do you kind of differentiate those? Yeah, people? so this is, this is a great question because it, it is confusing for a lot of people. And really intermittent fasting, from a practical standpoint, really just talks about the amount of time that you're not eating. So it right. doesn't really tell you about what you are eating when you are eating. It just says how many hours you're not eating for. So that's quite different, of course. Uh, than calories, which is, and, and people say over 24 hours, what if you eat the same calories, mm -hmm. but you say space it out versus all in one shot? And is there a difference? And it's like, yes, there is a difference. And the difference is that uh, your body uh, has the capacity to store food energy, right? So uh, for simplicity's sake, you can think of it as body fat. That's where we store excess yep. food energy that we don't need. So the, the whole point of intermittent fasting is to shift your body's uh, fuel source from food to stored food. So it's like a hybrid car, for example, which can go between gas and electric. Right. So when you don't have enough, when you have enough electricity, you use electricity. When you don't have enough, you can switch over and then you can do gas. I like that. And your yeah. body is really much the same. So if there's food energy coming in, so you're eating a meal, for example, then it, the hormone insulin goes up. And your body can use that energy, the glucose, all the cells, your kidneys, your liver, your brain can use that glucose for energy. And you're, you're, you're using food uh, to, to power yourself. Um, if you eat constantly, you are going to keep using mm -hmm. food for your energy and you're not going to burn body fat because that's your store, right? right? So why would you burn your stores if you have you you're know, energy? you right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when you do intermittent fasting, for example, what you want to do is the whole point is to lower the hormone insulin because insulin is sort of that switch that flips you over. Mm -hmm. So if you are now eating um, just sort of one meal a day, for example, and it's like a 23 hour fast, mm -hmm. after about three, four hours, you've burned through the available food. Right. So therefore your body now switches into using stored food or body fat. And that's really what it's there for. But the point is that you're changing the hormonal um, cause of weight gain because now you're burning body fat because there's really no food. So what is your body going to use? It has to use that body fat. So it's really a matter of switching your fuel sources rather than just counting calories, for example. So if you count calories, so say you eat a few calories all the time, yep. constantly throughout the day, your body is going to stay in that um, mode where it's using food. So you'll never be able to access your fat stores. So sometimes I, I, I uh, you know, think of it as just f switching fuel sources. And this is how people fast for, you know, five days, for example. Right. Because what they've done is that they've switched their body over to using the body fat. And therefore, a lot of times the hunger starts to go down because they're fueling themselves on the body fat. And a lot of people, when they do longer fasts, they'll find, for example, that they're only eating 500 or 800 calories. Mm -hmm. Because if you eat a normal sized dinner, say 800 calories, 1,000 calories, yeah. well, your body is using 2,000 calories. Where's the other 1,000 coming from? Well, it's come from your body fat. It's like, that's perfect. But you have to switch your fuel source first. If you take those 1,000 calories, and space it out through the day so yeah. that you can't access your body fat right. stores, then you're very soon your meta metabolic rate is going to have to drop because you're only putting in, you know, 1,000, 1,500 spaced out throughout the day. Mm -hmm. But because you've spaced it all throughout the day, you actually have blocked yourself access to that uh, body fat. Right. So from a technical standpoint, what we say is insulin blocks lipolysis or insulin basically blocks fat burning. Mm -hmm. You can't burn fat when you're eating because yeah. your body is in this fat storage mode. That is, your body is either storing fat or it's burning fat. But you can't do both at the same time. So if, you, if, if you're constantly eating, no matter how many calories you take, but even if it's very few calories, but you keep, keep putting your body back into that fat storing mode, 
then how are you going to burn it? Like you just can't get there, right? So that's a difference. So even if the calories are exactly the same, if you do sort of one meal and then intermittent fast, you can move your body into that sort of fat Because you flip burning. the switch, Yeah, right? it's about flipping that switch, about changing the hormonal uh, milieu of the body rather than purely calorie. Right. So then just to dive deeper on that, when you are eating, you know, there's so many different things you can eat, types of diets, right? So what do you recommend as a foundation in terms of food quality or whatever it may be when it comes to intermittent fasting? Yeah, I think that the, the main thing is to avoid, um, I mean, intermittent fasting you can do with any diet okay. because, again, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you which one. But generally, we recommend a low-carbohydrate diet. And it's because if you're used to burning sort of proteins and fats, um, whether you burn a, a dietary fat that you're eating or whether you're burning body fat, it's really the same sort of machinery that's, mm -hmm. that's going through. So therefore, it's an easier transition to go from a low-carbohydrate diet into intermittent fasting, which is why the ketogenic diet, for example, which is an ultra-low-carbohydrate diet, yep. a lot of people find that the fasting sort of slips together. right in there uh, because they're already used to it. So, you know, the main, from a dietary standpoint, like in terms of um, what to eat, I think the main thing really is to avoid the processed foods. Like sticking to real natural foods is probably much more important than mm -hmm. talking about, oh, you know, how many, you know, carbs and how many this and that. That's very difficult to, um, to know. Like if you're eating, you know, a piece of steak, like, what percentage fat is it? You have right. no idea, right? Yeah. It just looks the way it yeah, looks. Right. Um, so it's a lot easier to say, well, is this a food that looks like it came from nature? Yeah. Because if you're eating shakes and, you know, you know those Packaged protein are, bars yeah. and stuff, it's like, uh, that's not natural, right? So we know that if you eat less processed foods, then one, your body is going to get the sort of nutrition that it always has, like, uh, you know, this is the natural food. This is what our bodies have been evolved to mm -hmm. eat. Like, people have been eating meat. People have been eating avocados. Yep. People have been eating, you know, unprocessed grains and stuff like, you know, even like beans. That's yep. carbohydrates, but mm -hmm. so many societies have eaten lots of beans and yep. been very healthy. So there's nothing intrinsically wrong with it. But when you start really processing them, turning them into like crackers and cookies, yep. Now you're getting into trouble. Sugar obviously is a big issue too. I think you should really try and lower as, as low as possible mm -hmm. the amount of sugar. And it's the same thing. If you look at history, uh, we're eating just way more sugar than we used to. Of That's course. just, you know, because it's available, right? And people, it's sweet and it's, it's delicious. And it and, good. Yeah, yeah, it's addictive and so on. So, you know, I think the main thing is to try and eat natural foods and yeah. staying away from you know, you know, it may sound good to get this protein powder, right? right. But, you know, is that something that people used to eat in the uh -huh. 1800s? I don't right. think so. Did your serving? grandmother eat protein <laughs> yeah, right. powder? No, they didn't. So stay away from that. Those shakes, those, those bars, those powders. Stick to real food and you're, you're sort of mostly there. So just to, again, dive a little bit deeper on something, the carbohydrate concept of it, you've really made it clear that to refine the processed or packaged carbohydrates versus the whole food ones. Do you find that there, it's important to pay attention to the whole food types of carbohydrates that you should choose or is that? I think that it's, it can be a problem for some people. Um, but again, it's, 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 a lot of societies in the past have eaten lots of unprocessed carbohydrates and been very healthy. So the Okinawans, for example, have eaten sweet yep. potato and, you know, the Irish ate their potatoes yep. and the Chinese ate their rice. So there were, these are part of traditional diets. So therefore, clearly, it doesn't inevitably lead to weight gain mm -hmm. because those societies uh, were not like that. So. But staying away from the constant eating, like nobody in history ate six times, eight mm -hmm. times a day. Uh, most people are eating sort of once to twice a day. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, the other thing is sticking to sort of natural foods as much as you can. So a potato, a white potato, for mm -hmm. example, that, you know, Irish love their yep. potatoes. And it's very starchy, it's very full of carbohydrates, but clearly they were doing all right with that. Yeah. So it's not just the processed carbohydrates. So, but but you know, you take that potato now, you turn it into like processed French fries and potato chips. chips now yeah. you're just talking. Yeah. I'm not sure that's so good for you. But also the refined anything. So you, when you're talking about processed meats, like 
bologna and stuff, right. like and hot dogs. I'm like, okay, I'm not sure that that's that healthy for <laughs> you course, either. <laughs> and um, when you're talking about refined oil, so even fats, I think you have to stick to natural fats. And everybody thinks that vegetable oil is natural. It's actually not natural at all. That is, you, you take something like corn oil, and it's like your body is has we've evolved to eat corn. Yeah. Like we can eat corn, that's no problem. But when you corn is not oily, so to get <laughs> Two liters of corn oil, you have to literally process mm -hmm. like tons of corn to get that. Now you're taking a product that our bodies are not equipped to yep. handle. So now, of course, everybody thought, oh, margarine, corn oil, yep. it's great for you. Now we find out, oh, hey, it's full of omega-6s, highly mm -hmm. inflammatory, probably not good for you. We found out sort of in the late 90s, 2000s, that all that margarine was full of trans fats, yep. which wasn't good for you. So you're talking... Instead of natural fat, like you find in animal products, yeah. dairy, but even things like olive oil, right? Mm -hmm. You take olives, you squish it, you get yeah. the oil. That's natural. Mm -hmm. Avocados, very high in, yeah. in fat. Coconut, very high in fat. Yeah. But natural fat, as opposed to these highly processed unnatural fats. And, and it's because our bodies are not really evolved to mm -hmm. handle them that they're so deleterious to our health. You know, obviously you can eat some, but you don't want to eat it for your whole life. It's, it turns out to right. be very bad for you. So it's not just the carbohydrates that really, the refined carbohydrates that you really have to be careful mm -hmm. of, but the processed meats, refined meats, mm -hmm. um, you know, that sort of thing is sort of like iffy. Like, you, but, you know, again, you have to be careful because like if you take something like a, a prosciutto or something mm -hmm. like that, which is sort of, you know, it, it's, it's dried and yeah. cured versus... Oscar Mayer yeah. bologna. It's like you ever if you ever look at that or hot dogs, it's All like those ingredients Whoa, okay. in there. And, there yeah. is a ton of stuff in there and I'm not even sure what kind of meat is in there. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Right? Fair, absolutely fair. Um so <laughs> you do have to be careful. Processed meats, processed oils too. Yep. You have to be very careful. So it's really this foundation of whole foods, those one ingredient natural items. Yeah, yeah. as opposed to saying, Oh, I want to hit my macros, this percentage right. fat. It's like, well, if you have that percentage fat, but it's all refined seed oils, Source, right? I'm not sure that that's mm -hmm. very good for you, right? So now you're eating hot dogs and vegetable oils. And you're like, I don't know if that's so, so good for you, purpose, right? Yeah. As opposed to like, hey, have this natural mm -hmm. food. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. That was highly informative as always. Be sure to stay tuned for more videos with Dr. Fun because we will be back and subscribe for more awesome content.